Hey there athletes, Coach John Ferry here from Team Wilpers. Very, very excited to welcome you to our both Winter Run Challenge and Half Marathon Run Challenge Athlete Briefing number one. For people who've been around a little bit, maybe remember last year we actually split these challenges up so that they were in different groups, but it just didn't feel quite right to have everyone separated. So we're bringing everybody back into one spot Hopefully it works out, we'll see. The main goal of these challenges here, let's we'll start off with the winter run challenge. The main goal of our winter run challenge is to improve the result of a 20 minute distance test over the course of eight weeks. In this particular eight week challenge, the way that we're planning to uh, uh, kind of attack that, if you will, is to work on anaerobic capacity intervals, incline work, and endurance. So I really love this style of work kind of at the top of a season and or in an off season. The characteristics of this style of work are relatively short intervals with high intensity with pretty generous recoveries. So before you get too nervous about some of the paces and the kind of the vernacular that we're using with anaerobic capacity, et cetera, I actually tend to find these workout styles a little bit easier than some of the long distance tempo or threshold uh, intervals because the intensity is high, but relatively short. And once again, with a generous recovery to go along with it. So hopefully you're gonna find a lot of benefit, a lot of fun, uh, and also no need to be too intimidated by these workouts. Our goal here for the half marathoners is simply to run a half marathon in or around the weekend of March 16th and 17th. That just so happens to be uh, the weekend for New York City Half, Rock and Roll DC Half, Shamrock Half in Virginia Beach, Shamrock Half in Indiana, Indianapolis, and about 50 or so other races all around the country that weekend. So very popular race weekend. Naturally, there are going to be some other races out there that don't quite line up. We'll address that as we go. You certainly can also run abroad. We have these races here. You can certainly run abroad. You can also run where you are. You simply walk outside your home, run 13.1 miles, and you are a half marathoner, at least in my book. So we're going to hopefully make this as easy as possible. There's no rules, just right. The energy zones, the energy zones that we really want to attack here for the half marathon are two main energy zones. We're looking at our aerobic, aka endurance, aka easy pace. That's kind of an RPE of rate of, per, uh, rate of perceived exertion around two or three. And then we're gonna work sub threshold. So it's gonna be paces commonly referred to as kind of half marathon pace and marathon pace, maybe an RPE ranging from about four to seven or so. So these two zones are actually both still aerobic energy zones and contribute, contribute to building that big aerobic engine we're gonna need for the half marathon. The half marathon is run almost exclusively aerobically, so we're going to spend a lot of time working right there on those, uh, those zones. Let's do a little bit of housekeeping for everybody here. So let's talk about the website. So the website's going to have a few things. It's going to have your paces. Those are going to be dictated by your 20-minute distance test. They're going to have the workouts for each week, which for our run challenges here will always come out Friday morning. If you don't see your schedule Friday morning, there's an issue, so let us know. Uh, it's also, maybe most importantly, gonna have the square to check off to say that I did and accomplished the workout, and it's going to move that completion percentage up towards 100%. I think one of the best things you can do to set yourself up for success in these challenges and or half marathon challenge and or any other endurance pursuit is to track as close to that 100% as possible. It's an amazing goal, so get out there, check the box, and keep tracking towards that 100% completion percentage. I mentioned paces. So the paces are gonna be provided based upon the result of that 20 minute distance test. You will go to the website, use the little gear icon on the pace box to enter that result, and it's gonna give you the paces to at least start this challenge. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a bit. Now to our week one workouts. So we start in the same spot here with either the 20 minute distance test or our progression run. So we're gonna start with the 20 minute distance test. So this very simple test, you run as far as you can in 20 minutes, measure the distance, that's it, end of test. Yes, it is a maximal effort test, so it is intended to be a pretty tough workout here. Your pace zones will be negatively affected if you hold back too much in this test. So you do have to, once again, really give it a nice, hard, honest effort. 
Yes, I know the distance runners, you know, in particular talking about our half marathons, uh, mar half marathoners here don't always love speed work, but at some point we got to test and get a baseline of where to start. So we can do this workout in, inside, we can do this outside, we can do it on a track, you can do it on the road, etc. A few things that you are definitely going to want to do is make sure you're very well warmed up. You want to start hard and you want to finish hard. So this is a kind of an important note here. While it is a thousand percent okay to negative split this uh, 20 minute test, it is not designed to be a 20 minute progression run or progressive run in which you start easy and then finish hard. That is not how the test is laid out. It's a good opportunity for just talk a little bit about why performance testing and why we keep making you go and run these 20 minute tests. And simply it is the most accurate way of determining your current fitness and matching an accurate pacing zone for kind of where you are right now. So it takes into account running efficiency, determination, mental, uh, mental toughness, as well as pace. So why is that important? We need to meet you where you are today as opposed to where you were a month ago, a year ago, etc. It's very easy to kind of fall back to the pace range that maybe you were in in the fall when you were finishing some of your key races. Uh, but, you know, if a couple months has gone by, it's a little bit different now. So we want to make sure you, we're meeting you once again where you are today. It's no problem if it's not your peak. Sometimes one of the best things you can do to have a successful cycle and really, uh, you know, find progress is to regress your paces. Once again, meet yourself where you are today. You're going to find a lot more joy, a lot more um, kind of the the workout is going to feel much better. You're going to have more fun doing it. It's going to keep you going a little bit better. So that's why the performance testing here. You do, however, want to prep for that test, right? So you want to rest up and give yourself a really good shot at success. Don't overthink it. You do just want to get out and go running. Once again, 20 minutes, as far as you can go, stop at the end, end of test. No, not really any holding back here. The paces that you're going to use for your challenges are directly related to the result of this test. So once again, you want to give it a hard, nice, honest effort. It's not the end all be all. This is a baseline test. And finally, no strategy for week one because this is a baseline test. It's somewhere to start with. We're going to compare results down the road. So just go out, have a little fun with it, hopefully, and see how far you can run in 20 minutes. If you've just done this test within the last four weeks and feel really good about the result, it is okay to omit the test, use your previous result, and go straight into our progression run. There's really one, uh, one goal of this progression run, which is to get a little bit faster as you go. Great opportunity to practice pacing, great opportunity right off the bat to finish a workout feeling stronger than where you started, hopefully. We're gonna go into our run number two, so we're breaking apart again. However, what we all start with is that lunge matrix stretch. This is the little warm-up link at the top of the workout on our key run days. You need to watch this, you need to learn it, you need to get good at it, and you need to repeat it a lot. This is a great way to get uh, mobilized and ready to jump into harder runs. Also a great way to get mobilized and ready to go into easy runs. The goal of this mobilization is to get your body moving in three planes of motion before you go into the workout getting your, uh, your body much more kind of warmed up, activated, and ready to handle the running itself. So really check out that lunge matrix stretch. It would be a great one to include in every workout you do, and you can do it both before and after. It's, there's kind of a <laughs> never, too, never too much on that one. So our run number two for half marathoners here, we have a warm up inclusive of striders. And just a quick reminder on those striders, the strides are accelerations. Those are not hard intervals. So you want to just kind of accelerate up, peak it hard very quickly, and then cool right back down. What you're hoping to do is just open up that stride a little bit, very much like our kind of pre-run mobilizations, trying to get your body ready for the effort that's to follow. So this shouldn't feel hard. It shouldn't be hard. It's just a little bit of an acceleration, just a little bit of a rev of the engine. If it's starting to feel too hard, you need to reduce the pace, reduce the effort, etc. Make sure it's just part of the warm up. Then on our main set, we have two five minute intervals at half marathon pace. So we're getting some good zone three time here, this half marathon pace blocks. We're also starting to really practice what that pace feels like 
get it started to get it into our body very early here in training. Little warning for our indoor only runners, especially as people start to retreat inside, as temperatures start to come down. A very important part of this training process and these half marathon pace workouts in particular is to get the feel of that pace into your body. So while the tread is an excellent tool to be able to set the pace, be able to hold the pace, um, it is important at some point to take these workouts outdoors to where you're gonna run your races and to make sure that you do, you know, are able to practice it, to get the feel, to know what it's like, to hold that pace, etc. So just a little warning to our indoor only runners here. Run number two for our winter run challenge runners, anaerobic capacity intervals. Also starting with that lunge matrix stretch, very important as we are including that high intensity here. So we have 30 seconds of anaerobic capacity and for our baseline workout with 30 second recovery. It's a little bit longer for the easier workout here. So the goal is that this workout flies by. The key to making sure that's the case is that to take the recoveries extra light because it's only a 30 second uh, interval on right now. Our work to recovery ratio remains one to one, but that 30 second recovery is gonna zip by. So you need to take it super, super light. It is okay if it needs to go beneath easy pace because it's critical to the workout overall that you do recover during that section in order to be able to go to that same high level again for the next one. This is a workout in particular that us as adult runners, can, we, we goof a lot because we're so focused on completion of the total, um, total workout. However, you have to take these anaerobic capacity intervals all the way to pace in order to get the benefit. So if you need to take a little bit longer recovery in order to be able to bounce back and go to that pace, that's okay. If you can't possibly go to that pace anymore and your solution is to drop the, the intensity or to drop that pace down in order to complete the total sets, it's actually better. Your workout is done, go straight into the cool down. You didn't fail it, you did great. It means you'd win as all the way up to that anaerobic capacity as many times as you could. Now you're going into the cool down, but we don't, want to, we don't want to sacrifice that pace for quantity in this workout. Very different than our half marathon group, that everything is about quantity and getting to the end of the workout because it's endurance style. So kind of an interesting juxtaposition of two totally different types of training and how you would execute these workouts totally differently. Exciting for me at least. We finished together again with our long runs. Our kind of first range for half marathoners is four to six miles. Uh, 45 to 60 minutes for our winter run challenge participants. The goal of these runs is exactly the same on both groups, which is to look easy, feel easy, be easy, etc. You should walk away knowing you had much more to give at the end of this workout. Right now is about logging time on your feet, so to have fun with it, relax. There were some questions certainly about the distance range, especially on half marathon challenge of where to start within that four to six miles. So I think the easiest way maybe to pick the distance is really what's your longest run in the last four weeks. If it's four miles or less, then you should absolutely start at the lower end of that guidance. If it's six miles or more, you should start probably at the higher end of that guidance. If you're right in the middle, maybe start in the middle of that range. The, the final point of it is that you don't feel the same every time you go out for a long run. I certainly don't. So having a little bit of a range, a little bit of leeway of whether you feel having a great day or whether you're struggling a little bit is okay. It doesn't always have to hit it exactly on the head. So four to six miles, if you're having a great day, take it six miles. If you're really struggling, four miles is fine. We'll try again next week. So hopefully you can find your way in that range there a little bit, but definitely uh, take into account what your longest run has been recently make sure that you're making a smart decision of where to start. Let's go into some questions that came up here from the group. So first question was, can you explain more about what we can expect from the strength training portion of the half plus strength option? Target muscle groups, splits, week to week, etc. The week looks like primary lower, lower, lower body work. Also, is there any specific recommendations for rest between sets? So the first thing is I'm not gonna go too deep in here because it's a great question. 
There should be lots of questions about this as well as the winter run challenge plus strength. So we're just gonna schedule an all access briefing for early next week. So I'll get coach Ava Fagan, the designer and a star of the videos here to come in and just talk as much as people want about the strength programs and the goals. Um, date TBD, but probably Tuesday, most likely in the morning. So get your questions ready. I'll po certainly post it on the Facebook group. Emails will go out as well. Two, I would describe both programs here actually as whole body routines that are leg focused. In running, we do a lot, a lot of legs. So certainly gonna be a little bit uh, leg focus. Ava is a smart, smart lady. So things that I see already included in this programming is a lot of single leg work, plyometric hops, etc. Those are the lower body things that are gonna really uh, work on stability, gonna work on explosiveness off the ground. Love that she already has them included in, in week one. You're also going to see upper body stuff in terms of rows, push-ups, swings, etc. So while there's a little bit less on the upper body and we definitely are focusing on lower body, it is a full body routine. Yes, you should rest between sets. That I need to figure out how to add into the programming. But go ahead and say roughly 60 seconds between sets is a, a great place to start. Our next question here was using the 20-minute distance test for paces for half marathon verse inputting the distance that uh, will give you your goal half marathon pace and going off of that. So good question. I, I think probably this will hit a, a lot of people here. So, you know, if you have a particular goal time and you're worried that your 20 minute distance test doesn't equate to that goal time, a little bit tricky also. So we talked about the reason for perform performance testing of finding that pace and those, inter those pace zones that are very applicable to you right now. Uh, that being said, sometimes you can kind of work, uh, kind of bend the rules a little bit, um, you know, as you see fit. And what I would say is if you're pretty close and pretty close probably being within 15 or 20 seconds of that kind of target time that you're looking for, it might be okay. It probably is okay. Um, it's your workout, so <laughs> certainly certainly give it a try. And if you find that's too hard, it would be okay to adjust down. Similarly, if you're finding workouts are too easy, it would be okay just to gently tweak it up a little bit. Um, but that's okay. On the flip side, if you're a minute, a more you know, 30 seconds to a minute off, probably is not a good idea to make that pace adjustment, at least right now, to move your pace that much further forward. What ultimately you run the risk of is totally missing the target energy zone you're working at. And when you're working at half marathon pace, that's roughly a 97% of threshold. If you overshoot that by more than 3%, you're all of a sudden over threshold now and you're going into VO2 max. You're not going to have a lot of fun doing those workouts. It's going to be very, it's going to be much harder than intended. Uh, you're a little bit different, a lot of bit different energy zone than we're intending to work on. And it's going to be hard to maintain that effort. So you do run that risk if you move your pace too far forward that it's just going to be frustrating, difficult, and uh, you're not going to get the benefit that you're looking for, even though the effort is harder. So just be careful. Uh, it's okay. It might be worth, if you're well off what you're thinking of, is to wait a few weeks. Go ahead, get training for three or four weeks, and after that fourth week, see if you can move your pace up a little bit. Then train for a few more weeks and maybe move your pace up a little bit. Uh, in a 10 week block like this, we have limited opportunities. I would say you probably have a maximum of two opportunities in which you wanna give yourself a little bit of a pace bump, but that's not too bad. We've got two opportunities to just bump up a little bit, kind of coming into about two weeks before the race. Not the worst thing either. Our next question here is, can you discuss how to approach the 20 minute test when coming back from injury? Nervous to go all out for 20 minutes, but realize that holding back may result in inaccurate paces. So another kind of little tricky one here, but very, very reasonable. If I were coming back from injury, the, probably the last, it, 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 I would be nervous as well, of jumping into a, a 20 minute all out effort. That being said, you certainly need to be thoughtful as well about jumping into structured, difficult workouts. That would be a very similar concern. So be thoughtful about that also. That being said, it would be okay to skip that and you would have to kind of choose a different way to find your starting paces. If you've done a test prior, you could use that result, maybe just slow it down a little bit based upon how long you've been out of training. If you haven't done a test prior, 
you could even just kind of estimate about how far you think currently you could run at max effort in 20 minutes. Now, is this the greatest way to find it? No, definitely not, but it absolutely gets you started and then you can kind of adjust that effort based upon how the workout feels. So it would be kind of my last, uh, kind of last resort, if you will, but certainly better than doing anything to put yourself in a position to get re-injured or injured in the first place. So be careful, be thoughtful with your body and make your decision based upon that. Our next question here, uh, another really fun one. Can you talk about why it's necessary to vary types of runs? I add strength and cross training to my schedule, but why is speed work so important versus just running for distance? It's a great question. It's actually going to really apply to our winter run challenge people, because as we kind of talked about earlier, I'm sure everyone remembers it all. Um, we're going to, on the half marathon, spend so much time working sub threshold, but on winter run challenge, we're going above threshold. We're going above VO2 max and we're going to anaerobic capacity interval zones. And there are a few things we could talk about here, but I'm going to talk about one in particular, which is that our thresholds. So really we have three of them. We have aerobic, we have lactate, we have VO2 max. These are kind of our main thresholds. So it is very, very common amongst endurance athletes in particular to hit these performance plateaus. And the reason being is that, you know, you spend all this time doing the zone two work and zone three work and even coming into the low zone four work. So you're working aerobically, you're getting really strong there. But at a certain point, your aerobic capacity isn't going to jump past your lactate capacity. And similar, your lactate threshold isn't going to jump over your VO2 max um, threshold. So you have to work on those higher thresholds literally in order to open up room to continue improving. So if you're an endurance only athlete, you're a marathoner and you marathon and you marathon and you marathon and you marathon, and you marathon it's probably very likely that I take a look at, you know, I can take a look at your times and say your times are 401, four hours, 359, four hours, 359. If that sounds familiar to you, the, you know, it's falling right into this bucket. It's you're doing the same type of work, the same energy zone work, and you're just not going to get any faster because you haven't raised those higher thresholds. So it's really important for runners in their off seasons and different seasons, et cetera, to vary the type of workouts they're doing and really you know, spend the time doing above threshold work and raising that VO2 max and raising that lactate threshold so you've got the room to improve from underneath. So hopefully that makes sense there, but that's the, really the goal of what we're trying to do with multiple pace zones. And you got, when you're thoughtful about how you lay those out and attack them in your year, you can continue to progress and progress and hopefully not hit those performance plateaus. On the flip side, of being a one pace, easy only runner, there are a ton of benefits to that. Number one, the joy of running. Easy pace running is super fun. It's definitely the most type of, of the most fun run. Uh, there's plenty of aerobic help for just easy running. It's, you're getting all those benefits of aerobic running. You're burning calories, etc. So there's nothing wrong with one of easy only running. As a matter of fact, there's a lot of things right about it, but it wouldn't be a surprise if you don't see that performance increase just from easy only running. Our next question here, for folks who are looking to use the half marathon as part of an ultimate plan for a fall marathon and are used to a higher weekly volume, should we bring volume downs to what's in the plan or perhaps keep total weekly volume at current levels? I think the quick answer here is Yes, if you're used to a higher volume week, there's no reason to come down, to drop down to where we are right now. It's, I might sustain where you are right now as opposed to continuing to go up, up, and up. Uh, but if you're a little bit higher than us, we might catch up to you here in a few weeks and then you can kind of settle into the plan it is at or as is. No need to drop down if you're used to a higher volume. And then our final question for today here is actually, if we get to a point in training where the work we've done starts to make our paces feel easy, should we keep ourselves in check and stick to the day one plan? Or should we consider pushing the paces for a potential better race day outcome? Great question and also great problem to have. Workouts start to feel easy. You're wondering if you should go a little bit faster. And kind of the quick answer here is yes. And especially in a longer training block, you know, in our challenge infrastructure here, we so often are working eight weeks, six weeks, 
and it starts to get a little bit tricky of like, do you make a pace adjustment in the middle of a relatively short period? We'd usually say like six to eight weeks is about the amount of time in which it takes to see like a real performance increase kind of at minimum. However, we have a 10 week now, which is just a little bit longer. So kind of going back to what I mentioned before, my opinion, maybe as much as two opportunities to make a little bit of a tweak as we're going along. So if you're starting to feel really comfortable with those workouts, and if you're starting to wonder if you can drift a little bit faster, I would just take a very small little bump, just a little nudge forward and see how that feels. I would then give it a few weeks, I, once again, to maybe two times maximum over the course of a 10 week and an eight week, maybe one time at max coming off of the, our kind of unload week in the middle. Um, and then you, obviously at the end of our eight week, get to retest at the end of our half marathon. You go run a half marathon and then we'll have to kind of reassess down the road there. But yes, in, in the middle of a longer training block, it is absolutely okay to just make a little bump forward. My absolute favorite way to test is to have athletes run B races or races that are not their main event, but other little kind of tester races, 5Ks, 10Ks, et cetera, during the course of their training process to get a better real world check-in. Tend to be a lot more fun than doing a 20 minute distance test by yourself also. So certainly something to consider as part of your own training. But otherwise, if you're really feeling good and you're feeling strong, it is absolutely okay to give yourself just a little bit of a bump up. Well, friends, that is all for now. I am thrilled that we're jumping into week one on Monday. So thanks for being here. Have an incredible week one, and I'll see you back here next week.